It's 2015 and the Quinnipiac basketball and hockey teams are in the heart of conference play. But Dylan, which sport has had the hotter teams as of late? The athletes on the hardwood or the athletes on the ice? We have all the highlights and updates coming up next on Sports Pause. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sports Pause. I'm Dylan Fearn. And I'm Mario Hirsch Gordon. Dylan, the big story this week was the Quinnipiac women's basketball team and their rivals, Marist. This game marks the first meeting between the two teams since Marist defeated Quinnipiac in last year's MAC championship game. Q30's Jordan Siegler has more on the Bobcats mindset heading into the game. We're going to use it this year to fuel us to get us ready. Um, excuse me. Um. It sucks. It's been 10 months, one week, and five days since the Quinnipiac Bobcats fell to the Marist Red Foxes in the MAC Championship. 10 months, one week, and five days waiting for their first chance at revenge. Was this game kind of circled on your calendar going into the year? Did you guys focus in knowing this was gonna be a big game? Yes, this game has been circled since last March, so. The rivalry between the two that began brewing when Quinnipiac first joined the conference has only gotten more intense. And I know that you guys don't really like them too much. Is there even more bad blood after last year? Most definitely. Um, we're, I mean, it's tough after last year and what happened. And, you know, it's a team that broke your heart in the championship. I'm not going to like anyone that did that to us. So, um, yeah, I mean, we want to beat them and be able to say that we got that done. But the Bobcats are on a mission this year to do what they didn't do last year, win a MAC championship. So far, the team has shown that they are every bit as dominant as we've seen the last two years. Led by their senior duo of Sam Guastella and Jasmine Martin, they have a 15-3 record, are undefeated in conference play, and are currently riding a six-game winning streak. So now your team's been on a roll lately, six straight wins, winning by an average of, of, I think, a little over 25 points per game. What has been going right for your team? Well, again, I think I just talked about, like, you know, a real focus for us is outworking our opponent on every possession and not worrying about the end result. And The team has been running their patented gold rush this year, a system that emphasizes depth so the team doesn't rely on one or two players, something that they say has been crucial to their success. Playing together, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is just playing together. Um, there's, we have so many weapons, and when someone's not on, there's somebody else on, and there's always somebody just waving the towel, picking each other up, and I think that's the biggest thing. And we can just, we can go so deep, like we have over 11 or 12 players playing a game, and the fact that everyone can play says something. But the Bobcats aren't the only team having a good season. Sitting right behind them in the max standings with just one conference loss are Brian Georges and his Red Foxes. It's remarkable. Brian Georges is one of the best college coaches in all of basketball. Um, and what he's been able to do with Marist and the program and how consistently they've won um, winning nine, nine straight MAC titles. Um, it's going to be no minor accomplishment tomorrow night knocking off the defending champions. Marist remains the only MAC team that Quinnipiac has yet to beat. The team feels that a win in Thursday night's game will go a long way to establishing themselves as the team to beat in the MAC, an honor that Marist has held for over a decade. I mean, obviously they want to knock us off, and so does every other team. But I feel like if we can get this win this um, early in conference play, then that'll definitely set send a message out to. Um, the conference and the rest of the MAC uh, about what we've come here to do. I think we really need to beat them. It'll be great for our confidence. It'll be great for showing the other teams in the MAC that you know we're the best team and that we're here you know to stay. And Trisha Fabry knows that beating Marist is essential to achieving their goal of winning the MAC. But as history has proven in the MAC, all things run through Marist, and we're going to have to have success against them if that's what we ultimately want to accomplish this year. And after 10 months, one week, and five days, 
the Bobcats hope that Thursday night's game will bring them the revenge that they've so desired. From the TD Bank Sports Center, I'm Jordan Siegler. So the rematch. First game since that championship game up in Massachusetts, the Mass Mutual Center. The Quinnipiac University athletes in attendance at the TD Bank Sports Center, the game of emphasis for Trisha Fabry's squad pumping up the Bobcats. It was a tale of two halves in the first half. Quinnipiac sharing the sugar. Sam Guastella from the right wing three ball was good. Another three ball, for this time from the freshman Sarah Schuen, the Canadian on the scoreboard. The senior captain Jasmine Martin for three along the right side. And then along the right side again, a three from 33, Boo Abshire. Quinnipiac took a 45-19 to 19 lead into the half, cruising. But like I said, the tale of two halves, Dylan, Quinnipiac, the adrenaline was high in the first half, very low in the second. The wide open shot for Jasmine Martin doesn't even touch the rim. Maris would eventually cut the 30 point deficit down to 15. Here, Boo Abshire takes an ill advised shot early on in the shot clock, barely grazes the front rim. Maris came back, made, it, made things interesting, but eventually it was the Quinnipiac defense. Here on the entry pass, three Bobcat defenders tip the ball to Jen Fay. Jen Fay, beautiful outlook pass to Maria Napolitano, who finishes on the end. A fist pump to her team, Quinnipiac would go on to defeat the Marist Red Foxes 73 to 55. Dylan, what a dominating performance. Dominating, but now you got three straight road games. We're gonna see what this team is really made of. Both coaches talked about their team's performances after the game. Because we have had a problem in our program since we have a lot of young kids, lost three 1,000 point scores. We have a problem of what I mean by that is they still think they're the other Marist teams and that it's just going to come to them. And that first half was as poor first half as I've witnessed in 12 years. Not taking anything away from Quinnipiac. They shot the ball well. They did almost anything they wanted. We played nervous. We played scared. And we played tentative. Uh, I thought our first 20 minutes was just fantastic basketball. Stifling defense taking away personnel, limiting uh, their best players to really having anything free and easy. And offensively, uh, we continue to stay pretty much on, on a roll what we've been able to do uh, uh, the last two weeks. So um, first five minutes of the second half, pleased. And then the last 15 minutes could have been definitely better. Before we even stepped foot in the MAC, they had, everyone had their eyes on us, um, like Quinnipiac versus Mary. So yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Obviously, we would have wanted a different result in the championship last year, but that's what's fueled us to be where we are now. And so this win. After starting the season 0-4 in conference play, the men's basketball team had two crucial games this past week with a chance to get back to 500. Did Zayed Hurst come up clutch for the Bobcats, or was it an unsung hero who turned in a spectacular performance? Don't go anywhere. You're watching Sports Pause. Welcome to A Sheer Sensation, North Haven's premier cosmetology service, located at 140 Washington Avenue, minutes from Hamden. We offer an array of services, from basic cuts and colors to lash extensions and formaldehyde free keratin treatments. We also provide hair chalk and styling for men. When you spend $60, your cue card will get you 10% off. Call us at 203-239-6477 to make your next appointment at A Sheer Sensation. We are your source for entertainment news.
Welcome to Joya Spa and Salon in Hamden. Whether you want a new look or the perfect wedding day hair, come to us for complete hair and nail care. Cuts, styles, updos, extensions, and beautiful dimensional hair color. As well as manis and pedis, acrylics, gels, and shellac. Treat yourself to a facial, a peel, or microdermabrasion. Relax with a variety of massage techniques, including Swedish and hot stone massage. Joya Spa and Salon. Call today. Two, one. Welcome back to Sports Pause. The men's basketball team traveled to Jersey City for a midweek tilt with the St. Peter's Peacocks. The first half was tightly contested with neither team leading by more than five points. But with just under seven minutes remaining in the game, a Justin Harris jump shot gave the Bobcats a one-point lead that they would not relinquish. Zaid Hurst led Quinnipiac with 23 points, while Usman Drame added 15 points and grabbed 11 rebounds en route to a 63-55 win. Maury, two days later, Quinnipiac would take on Manhattan in Hamden for a rematch of the MAC semifinals game. Let's get to the highlight. Uh, last time they faced was March 9th, and uh, Quinnipiac looking for some revenge against the Jaspers. Uh, this would be a much different game than the MAC semifinals. As midway through the first half, Kasim Chan is going to find an open Usman Drame. He's going to try to slam it, get some contact. He's going to get it to go. Wanted the flush and the foul, but will take the two points. Drame finished with 12 points and a season high 19 rebounds. Now it's Manhattan's turn. Uh, Rashawn Stores missed three. Emi and Duhar the rebound, and he'll get the layup to go over Sam Dingba. And Duhar Moy, one of the best players in the MAC, he finished with 25 points and 12 boards. Quinnipiac's turn. Justin Harris with a missed hook shot. He gets his own rebound after the tip, and one after the foul. Big Daddy, the senior, with five points, but two important ones right there. He get the free throw to go for the old-fashioned three-point play. Let's move to the second half. At halftime, Quinnipiac had a 10-point lead, but Manhattan would hit their stride. Rashawn Stores, bang, three of his seven right there. Tying the game at 39, but that was as close as Manhattan would get as a no-look pass from Usman Drame to find the open Chase Daniels for the end one. Daniels with eight quick points in the opening minutes of the game, finished with 11 and three, both career highs for the freshman. And then with one on the shot clock on the next possession, Zayed Hurst tells Shane Richards no. Zayed Hurst with impenetrable defense all game long. Did it on both sides of the ball as we're gonna see here as uh, he will finish this game with 23 points. Second straight game with 23, he's gonna show Ashton Pankey and Shane Richards what's good. Splash right there from the right side. As we said, two straight games for Zayed Hurts, 23 points, and he played great defense on Shane Richards. 0 for 11 from the field was the Jasper. Final score, 73-59, Quinnipiac. Here's Tom Moore, post game. Five out of six now in the league, and eight and three since the BU game. Our guys, um, uh, it gives them a, you know, seasons are very difficult. They're long, they're challenging, they have ups and downs. And when you get on a little bit of a roll, um, it's it's the it's the kids need to see results. You know? Now we're going to throw it to men's basketball analyst Andrew De Andrew Badillo to give us his breakdown on the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Andrew, what's the latest? Thanks, guys. The Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference has completely changed this season, especially offensively. Out of the 11 teams in the MAC last year, eight averaged at least 69 points per game. This year, there has been a significant drop-off as only two teams, Siena and Iona, averaged more than 70 points per game. Sure, the league lost many premier scorers from last year, such as Billy Barron, George Beeman, and Ike Azatam, but for the conference's offensive numbers to decrease this much is quite drastic. The max drop-off in offensive production does not include Iona. The lack of offensive production has allowed Iona to cement itself as the favorite to win the conference as they are third in the country in scoring offense, averaging 83 points per game. Teams such as Ryder, Monmouth, and Canisius are taking advantage of the league's lack of offense. All three teams rank in the top four of the max standings, thanks in part to each team's defensive play. Monmouth, Ryder, and Canisius all rank in the top four in max scoring defense. The MAC is tightly packed this season as, as we head down to the final stretch of the season before March. Here are my teams to watch for. My first team is the Canisius Golden Griffins, who are currently the hottest team in the MAC. Griff's head coach Jim Barron will be a candidate for MAC Coach of the Year, and in my mind, he should get it. Canisius lost defending MAC Player of the Year, Billy Barron, to graduation last season, and after a slow start to their 2014 2015 MAC schedule, the Griffs are now lined up for a first round bye in the MAC tournament. My second team to watch is the Quinnipiac Bobcats. After losing their first four conference games, the Bobcats have now won four out of their last five conference games. 
since head coach Tom Moore moved Usman Drame, Evan Conti, and Kasim Chandler from the starting lineup to the bench, the Bobcats have been on a tear. Quinnipiac is one of the few teams in the MAC that have the ability to light up the scoreboard on any given night. Now that they're playing better basketball, they could pose a threat come March. About a month is left in the season. Enough time for teams to get hot and for teams to burn out. Maury and Dylan, back to you. And when we come back, the women's ice hockey team had a chance to inch their way closer to a number one ranking. Two tough road matchups gave the Bobcats all they could handle, but was it enough? And the men's hockey team dropped two games this past weekend against Merrimack while losing two key players to injury in the process. Don't go away. We'll be right back. That was then, this is now. Don't be just a number. Hello, welcome to Chameleon. At Chameleon Hair Color Cafe and Spa, it's all about what makes you feel beautiful. Their professional team is dedicated to helping you reach your customized beauty goals from your head to your toes. Chameleon Hair Color Cafe and Spa, where it's all about what makes you feel beautiful. Jump to number three in the latest USCHO.com poll, the highest in program history. Currently sitting pretty in first place in the ECAC standings, the Bobcats took to Boston to play the seventh ranked Boston Terriers and the number one Boston College Eagles for two non-conference road games. Against the Terriers, Quinnipiac came out flat, surrendering two goals in the opening period. Bobcats would get on the scoreboard a minute into the third period, but it was too little too late as the Terriers would add another goal late in the final stanza to win 4-1. Then guys, three days later, the Eagles welcomed the Bobcats to town for a Saturday matinee. BC came into the game with a 22-0-1 record. Bobcats outshot the Eagles 6-4 in the first, but found themselves down 1-0. Boston College would add another in the second period, but Nicole Connery lit the lamp with just under three minutes left in the game to make it interesting. Bobcats couldn't find a way to score again, falling to the Eagles by a final of 2-1. Now for men's hockey, we're going to bring in our ice hockey analyst, Connor Fortier. Connor, thanks for coming on. It's good to be here, guys. How are you guys doing? Everything's great. Good, good. So we've been hearing a couple of uh, bumps and bruises for this men's ice hockey team, Rand Pecknell squad, a couple of plagued injuries. Just give us an update on that, and, and who's the biggest loss in your opinion? Uh, well, right now we have nothing official for injuries as far as the men's ice hockey team, but um, it looks like Devon Taves left the Merrimack game uh, two weeks ago. It didn't return. Um, if he can't play coming up in these next ECAC weekends, that's going to be the biggest loss for the Bobcats. He's a very important defenseman. He's leading defenseman for uh, scoring, has the most points on the team for defensemen. But he's very integral on the power play, too. He's a, he's a smart player. He knows when to chip and when to um, get back to defense very quickly. And it's a big loss for them if he can't return quickly. So uh, if he can't return quickly, uh, Devontae's is a big loss on the defensive end. Gartek in, in net, is it Sean Lawrence who needs to step up? Is it someone on the decor that needs to step up? Or is it someone on, uh, on the offense who needs to put more goals in the net? I think I'd trust the goaltending as far as if it's between Lawrence or Gartek. But um, the stronghold of this team is the defense. But they're not exactly deep when it comes to the bench. So the person that's going to have to step up is freshman Kevin McKiernan. He's probably going to, he's, between him and Joe Fiala, they're that seventh defenseman in. Um, when someone's out of the lineup, if they're trying to get new legs in. Um, we've seen Joe Fiala play uh, up at Ford um, this past game. So if he's, if he's going to stay up there or Alex Barron's uh, going up forward, like we've seen Rand Pecknell use him earlier this season, Kevin McKeon is going to have to sit up in that decor. We know Federico and Clifton and Augusta are going to be solid, but it's who underneath them is going to have to really step up, and that's why it's Kevin McKeon. So it tays out. Guard takes a question while we mentioned the goaltending, Maury. Uh, you mentioned Fiala and McKeon. What kind of lineup changes are we seeing with the lines and things like that? 
Um, I would be surprised if uh, head coach Rand Pecknell kept uh, either Fiala or Barron up at a forward position. That's why I might see someone like a Braden Sherman come off the bench uh, and play a forward. Uh, maybe Cannon Peeper playing alongside his brother Bo. We haven't seen Cannon in a little bit. We've seen more of Bo. Um, but that's what I would. Exp uh, that's why I think you'd see the most changes up on the four lines. We've already seen flip flopping after this winter break with Travis St. Dennis playing with you know with Sam Ennis and Matthew Pekka playing with Soren Janssen. That's probably going to stay. But it's those bottom two lines well, between the Tim Cliftons, the Andrew Taverners. We're going to see a lot of the mo the most changes. As far as the decor, I don't think you're going to see a lot of mixing up between Federico and Clifton. They've been together all year. Uh, Augusta could be matched up with Fiala just because they're both big bodies and they could bring the physical play to the ice, and then those bottom D pairs, you'd have to see if it's, you know, if it's between Alex Barron or if he's going to address um, five defensemen like we've seen him do before. So that's where you're going to see the most change, those the bottom half of those uh, D pairs and those forward lines. So how is the team going to have to play to account for these injuries? They're going to have to play a little bit different type of, uh, type of game. This is a very opportunistic team. We've seen them counter a ton and rely on uh, young talent to get them up the ice, and I think that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to play a possession style of hockey. They're going to have to do tight four checking if they want to chip and chase, and they're going to have to uh, definitely establish the cycle below the goal line. They're not going to have to uh, have the comfort of having a dynamic player like Devon Taves up on that blue line who, like I said, can make plays from there. They're going to want to keep below the goal line and rely on their skilled forwards to do everything for the work in front of the net, and then obviously uh, involve the D, but not as much as they'd like to. Connor, thank you very much for your insight. No problem, guys. We'll be with you all season. It will be interesting to see how the team fares on the road at Brown and at Yale this weekend. Well, more that's all the time we have today. For more information, check out our Twitter and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Q30 Sports. And don't forget to check out our website at Q30Television.com. For, for our executive producers, the entire staff, and Dylan Fearon, I'm Mari Hirsch-Gordon. We'll see you next time.